Hello and welcome back to the shop. Today, this weekend, I'm here. I'm going to be continuing to work on the front end repair for our 91 Mercury Capri. Um, last time I was here, I got the headlights and the fenders and the hood kind of gently set in place to start checking some panel gaps. Um, I have a few more adjustments to make with this piece for kind of where it's going to sit. Um, there's a couple tweaks I want to make. So the radiator, the air conditioning condenser, the fans, everything kind of lines up in the best case scenario. The fender gaps and the, the lines for the body are going to line up and look nice. Um, and then my goal this weekend is to start welding. Um, I know I'm not going to be able to start doing paint and fixing other things this weekend just because I won't have time. Um, but I'd really like to get the position finalized and actually start welding and um, kind of best case scenario I can just throw some primer on it so it doesn't rust until I can come back some future weekend and continue working. So let's jump back into the work. Time to get working. Oh man. Okay, before I can get this final position figured out, kind of side to side, um, I wanna do some surface prep on the actual car side. Um, so it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but everywhere that these um, spot welds were drilled out, um, there's actually like some raised parts behind it. Um, so it's not like perfectly flat and smooth. Um, it's easier to see on the donor car for when I cut everything off. Uh, kind of left these little like donuts everywhere where the old spot welds used to be. Um, so what I want to do is kind of just grind those flush. So it's just a flat sheet of metal again. Um, I did some test spots with the grinder with just like a sanding wheel. Um, and I mean the sheet metal isn't perfect, but you can see it doesn't have this little um, protrusion anymore. It's a lot flatter. So. Um, since the spot welds aren't perfectly in the same spot on every car, um, I don't think I'll be able to just line up every single hole with where a spot weld used to be on a different chassis. Um, so I'm just gonna grind it flat and not have to worry about trying to line up 85 holes at once. I can just kind of set it where it needs to be, use the studs for the front bumper, um, and kind of just use those, and then some of these components that bolt up to line it up because it's way easier to get five out of five than it is to get 85 out of 85 to all line up and work together. So um, I think we're gonna take that off, um, grind for a while, make a bunch of sparks, and then we can kind of put it back to this and kind of get the final position marked out. Um, down to the ground, you're dragging me. Okay, now that we've got this kind of flattened out, more or less, I mean, this one wasn't as bad as the other car. Uh, there's still plenty of like grease and grime and there's little bits of pitting from rust, from where it started rusting, like in between the layers of sheet metal from the previous time it was repaired. Um, the factory used like seam sealer on the corners. Um, so like you can see here is a giant thing a seam sealer just to try and keep water from getting in between those layers of sheet metal. Um, but it still happens. Um, so I think since I'm here and I don't want to keep taking the front end on and off, I'm just going to go at it with a wire wheel and a little bit of sandpaper everywhere that I'm going to be welding and basically just kind of do the final weld prep right now just to get it down to clean bare metal.
Okay, so I spent some time um, just surface prepping, grinding off rust that was back here from when it used to be welded on that car. Um, I also went through, wire brushed everything. So now we have nice, mostly clean metal, as clean as I'm gonna be able to get it with the tools I have. So I'm just gonna take some soapy water, kind of wipe off all of the metal shavings and all of the rust dust from um, using the wire wheel. Okay, so this is my plan for rust prevention. I'm not gonna pick up the whole front end because it's very large and I'm trying to just use this for demonstration. So pretend this is the piece that we're going to be welding on here. It's going to go over here. And since we have it drilled out, we can't just pinch weld like we did from the factory. So we're just gonna kind of fill in the hole with weld and just kind of take our, our weld wire and just kind of build up like a donut inside the circle and kind of just fill that in, like we're coloring a coloring book, except it's with weld, and that's called a plug weld. Um, but since we have bare metal here, and on that one we have some bare metal here, if I just weld it there, there's gonna be very tiny gaps in between the layers, and I don't want that to rust. I also don't wanna just paint everything, because then I don't know where I'm gonna be welding, and um, it's gonna be hard to remove the paint if this is entirely painted, I put this over the top, and I say, I want to weld inside that hole. Well, I can't. I can't really get to the paint that's inside there to take the paint off, have good, clean metal for the welding wire to melt and adhere to. So, instead of trying to guess, and hopefully I get the right spots, or just use a bunch of seam sealer on the edges to kind of hopefully prevent air and water from getting to this bare metal, I'd rather paint the bare metal and have something permanently on it. And then, um, you know, if, if worst case scenario, water does get in between the two layers, it only rusts the couple spots where the weld wire didn't actually melt. Um, <laughs> so here's my plan. So all the areas where we ground down and we have shiny metal, we're going to prime all of this metal. On the back side of the front end, we're also going to prime and paint everything so we have good sealed um, metal. There's no exposed metal, it's not gonna be able to rust. Then, um, I'm going to take the front end piece, kind of get it lined up where it needs to be, and let's say now we have our final, our final location mapped out. Um, I'm going to take a Sharpie, mark all the holes where I'm going to be filling with weld, then, I can take the front end back off. I will have little circles of where the weld I know is going to be. Instead of trying to guess, I'll know 100% because I'll have just marked every single hole I'm welding. And then I can just remove or sand off the paint in just those circular areas. I'll go a little bit bigger just, you know, um, for having some, just some wiggle room. Um, and then on this side, because we're not really welding the flat part of the sheet metal, we're welding like the inside of the circle. I can take a standard deburring tool and I can just clean off the inside edge of the circle. So that'll be bare metal. We'll have bare metal circles where we need this to be and everything else will be covered, protected, have um, rust neutralizing primer. Um, and I won't have to worry and try and use like a weld through primer or try and get good coverage with seam sealer. So that's my plan. So we're going to mask, we're going to clean first with just soapy water and then um, we'll come back through with some isopropyl alcohol so it evaporates. We have a nice clean surface with no residue for the paint, sorry, the primer to stick to. We'll offer it back up, get the final position figured out, mark all of our holes remove the paint where we need to remove the paint, and only where we need to remove the paint. And then we can put the piece back on, we'll have bare metal everywhere we need to weld, and then we can actually weld. So that is my plan for how I'm doing rust prevention on the sheet metal uh, repair. Okay, I have this set on here for the second to last time. Um, have the fenders on here just loosely, um, but I think this is where the final position is going to be. Um, things are lining up pretty close to where they were before.
Um, that's not quite where it was welded, it's back there. Um, this piece, there's kind of a, a gap between them, so I have some clamps to try and hold that together when I weld. Um, but as far as side to side, our fender gap is there. Um, our studs are lined up kind of in the middle of the hole. Um, we're kind of lining up with the old spot welds in some of these spots. Other spots, not as much, um, but I think this is kind of where we're going to be. Um, we have good panel gaps on either side. Um, and then the only thing off is the hood. So I'll have to loosen the hinges and kind of slide the whole hood that way, about an eighth of an inch or so. Um, and then we can kind of, you know, massage the fenders um, as necessary because the holes are bigger than the bolts. So we have a little bit of adjustability on each side. But I think this is going to do it for the position. Um, so I'm going to kind of mark where I'm going to be welding, um, sand off the paint where I'm welding and only where I'm welding, and then we will actually start um, like clamping and tacking in place. I'm shaking now Cause you say those things Then shut me out Got no clue What you have found I'm a rose in thorns but you cut me down It's wrong, I can't think right I love the butterflies and myself But this is the last It's time. wrong, I can't think right Slipping off in the moonlight when I know it's true Okay, I've got this positioned, I've got it Held on here, we have good clean metal to weld through on both the donor piece and the back piece. Next thing before we start welding, I want to plan out my uh, plan of attack. I need to plan my plan. Um, so for me, what I think is gonna be the biggest struggle is going to be getting good clean welds. And part of that is because of the paint. So I've tried to do bare metal and bare metal everywhere I can, but it's not gonna be 100% perfect. The other thing um, that goes into a, a good quality weld is having a good ground. Um, and since we're doing sheet metal, um, it is very thin and finicky and you have to be like, you gotta get it just right. Um, so because we're working with just a kind of cheap ground clamp, it's the one that came with the welder, um, what I'm gonna try and do is get the ground clamp close to wherever we're welding. So like here for the headlight buckets, we're gonna be welding in here. I wanna try and put this somewhere close by. Um, preferably not on like a neighboring piece of sheet metal because now for the current to travel to here, it's gotta go through whatever little pinch welds are making connection. So it's going through a couple points and then through this whole panel and then to the actual electrode tip. So I wanna try and get it as close as I can. Um, that's kind of plan one. And then the second part of the plan is, um, I think I'm gonna to try to put it on the car side, not the donor side. Um, I don't know why, I kinda of just picked that to me. It seems like it makes more sense. Um, but now I'm gonna go around and sand off the paint in that one spot just so I know we have good connection because this won't be able to make connection through the paint, obviously. Um, so we're just gonna take some time and do that now. Okay, for ground clamp locations, I have selected this area for doing these welds. Over here for doing the welds that attach to kind of this piece, which is all kind of one solid piece so we can do up front here this part, and then kind of this first top part of here. Um, and then for the bottom part here, most of that is going to like this piece. So to save time and kind of do both sides, I just did one in the middle. So we have one there, and then kind of on the, the inside as well. It's hard to see in the shadow, but um, I have both sides of this sheet metal because it's kind of a, a pinched layer. Um, and then the other two on the other side, so we can do the, the headlight buckets, the side welds, and then front welds will be kind of that bottom corner. And if I notice things aren't working out, I will adjust and kind of reevaluate.
But I think now we are actually ready to try doing our first tack welds. Okay, it is the next morning and yesterday things were not going well. Um, I started trying to do some like tack welding and it was not going good. Um, it was kind of like spattering and not really adhering very good. Um, so I got kind of really discouraged, but I didn't give up. I'm still here, still working on it. Um, so I just pulled the front end off. Um, I didn't bother filming it, but I ground around the welds a little bit more to give myself more bare metal on metal. Um, so hopefully have a better circuit and be able to get a better weld. Um, just, you know, had dinner, got a good night's sleep and we're back at it in the morning. Um, and overnight I also um, did some double checking just for my own sanity. Um, so back here this morning before we start, I'm going to kind of double check a couple things and hopefully this helps anyone else who's having is issues um, welding very thin sheet metal. All right, apologies for the mess, but there's a couple different things you can check. Kind of the main first thing you wanna check is depending on how you're welding, you wanna check your polarity. So what part of the circuit is the welding wire, the electrode, um, and what part of the circuit is the grounding clamp? Cause it's not always, um, it's not always the same way. So for flux core, um, which is no shielding gas, we're just running our welder with um, mild steel flux core, 0 0.030 inch um, wire, um, no shielding gas. It's got that flux built into it. Um, it's actually inside the wire. Um, so for that, the polarity you want is you want your electrode, the handle, the part that has the wire actually coming out, this is the electrode. You want that to be the negative side of the circuit, which means your grounding clamp is positive, which sounds backwards, but for flux core, no gas, that's the polarity you want. Um, so I, on ours, this is the 40 Easy Weld 140. It's got just a connector here. Um, so it comes out and then this is the side that goes to your, the, the electrode out to the, the weld gun or the weld tip. So this, you just kind of pick which one you want and then the other one goes to the grounding clamp directly. So here we see we have our grounding clamp is on the positive side of the circuit. And that means this, the electrode side, is going to be the negative side. So our polarity was correct yesterday, um, which is kind of frustrating because that wasn't the problem. Um, if that was flipped, that would be a very easy, obvious, okay, that's why it was going so horribly. Um, another thing is getting good ground connection. So even though I kind of sanded away the paint, we can still have a poor ground connection. Um, this is the ground clamp that comes with the welder. It's not terrible, but most people, um, they kind of recommend accessorizing and the first thing you do is get a better ground clamp. Um, so this morning I stopped at Harbor Freight, got a couple things. Uh, this one is a very similar, just clamping style, but instead of having kind of two square U shapes, you have this like nice rounded shape. Um, it's a lot more copper. Um, it's kind of a heavier duty spring, so it will squeeze a little tighter. I don't know if that's actually going to help very much, but uh, it was cheap. It was like $6, so we'll just swap the cable over and try using this. Um, and the other thing, um, this isn't so much for weld quality. It's more just for ease of use. Um, this is the typical tip that comes on the end of our, um, our MIG, because this is used for... Um, the shielding gas. So you can still use this if you're doing a uh, flux core wire without any shielding gas um, But it's kind of big and it, it it's bulky and it gets in the way um, Which is difficult when you're trying to weld like in the corner Which we're doing a lot of so another thing you can do is get one of these gasless MIG tips um, So you can see it is shorter and narrower um, So what this allows you to do Hard to do this one-handed. Uh, come on. So this uh, is shorter, so it actually lets you get the 
electrode tip, which is kind of this copper piece, um, that gets closer to what you're actually working on. Um, it's narrower, so you can kind of see around it and see what you're doing. Whereas if you use the the bigger tip for the, the gas shielding, you can't actually see the tip because it's kind of inside here. Um, this is not the right one. This doesn't have threads. This is for a different type of welder, so I won't be able to use that today. Um, I'm going to just take this one back because um, we need the, the threads. Um, so I ordered that. That'll be here in a few days on Amazon, but that won't help us today. Um, so for now, um, we're just going to go back to using that one. We'll try a different ground clamp. Um, and then the final thing is settings. Um, so for what we're doing, because we have different gauges of sheet metal and they have sometimes multiple layers stacked up, that's going to make it tricky. Um, I took some digital calipers and measured a couple layers of the sheet metal, and some are as small as like 0 0.03 inches, and some are like 0 0.07, which is a little bit bigger than 1 16th of an inch. Um, so for no gas, flux core, mild steel, um, what we're going to be doing is kind of somewhere between 1 and 3 for our settings. So on the front here, 1 and 3. Um, one and three. So I'm just gonna have to play around with it and um, kind of experiment and different parts of the car might get different settings. Um, but the good news is uh, last night when I took this off to do a little bit more grinding and sanding, um, the tacks that I was doing, they were holding. So all hope is not lost, uh, even if I do the same poor quality welds as I did yesterday. They are still functional welds and they kept the front of the car from coming off. Um, so I actually had to like kind of cut those tacks a little bit. Um, so it was ugly but it worked and most of this is going to be covered up by fenders and front bumpers so really we don't care how it looks as long as it works. So I'm going to swap over the ground clamp and get back to work and hopefully our welds look better this morning. I know you're never supposed to show your welds on the internet because everyone's gonna make fun of you, but they're uh, they're really ugly, but that started as just an open hole and you can see it's uh, mostly closed now. Um, up here, I kind of just welded around the rim of the hole um, and kind of put like a tack in between these two sheets right here. Um, but it's holding strong. Um, you can see this part down here is not, that can still move a little bit, but it's not clamped anywhere else. And if I just grab this and yank on it, I can basically move the whole car with that tack. And then we've got one clamp down there, a couple clamps on this side. But yeah, this is already, Again, definitely not pretty. I am not claiming to be an expert by any means, um, but I think I got our settings dialed in for this really thin sheet metal. Um, these sheets are like 0.03 thick, which is basically the thickness of our welding wire. Um, so the settings I'm using for that is like, uh, these are the settings I'm using right now. This is the volts and amps. This is the wire speed. So I like that the uh, the Forney has like infinitely adjustable knobs. Because if I had to just click it and it could only be at one or two, I might be screwed. But because I can kind of adjust it, I can be like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 instead of just one, two, one, two. Um, and we're just gonna slowly work our way around, kind of bounce around do probably like one spot at a time um, just so we don't get too much heat into things and cause warping yeah so far I think it's going better than yesterday so we will just keep working away and I'll let you know how it goes here in a few minutes
Uh, it still kind of looks like um, just kind of like a bunch of little blobs of metal that are separate. Like someone just kind of took a bunch of little ball bearings and poured them in the hole, but it's it's fused. So yes, it is solid metal. It's not one perfect solid chunk. Like this one you can see is all lumpy and um, the thing about welding really thin sheet metal, like the stuff cars are made of, it's really tough. Um, really thick metal that you're welding is easy from a technique standpoint. Obviously it takes more current and amperage, but with this little stuff, it's difficult because of the opposite direction. It's really easy to have too much volts and amperage and you just melt straight through the, the metal and then there's nothing left to weld to. Um, so you have to be very delicate and careful with what you're doing um, and kind of really watch your technique. You have to do short tacks. You can't just lay a bead and then keep laying it and laying it and laying it because you're just going to get it too hot and then it's like going to start melting through these really thin layers. Um, so that's why it looks like a bunch of separate little tacks is because that's what I had to do is you kind of just do like you know, a, a one second long tack is kind of like the the maximum I'm trying to do here. So you can do like a 1001, and then that's, that's it, because you want to go slow. So yes, you could pick this apart. Um, you could x-ray it and find all the voids and porosity in there, but who cares, all right? It's one of probably 50 different tack points. So as long as it joins this piece of metal, to this piece of metal, or whatever the whatever's below it. That's all it has to do. Doesn't have to look pretty, doesn't have to look perfect. I could grind it smooth and you'd never notice, aside from a few little tiny um, like voids here and there. But that's gonna get covered up with paint anyway, so. All right, just for fun, I ground a few of the welds smooth, or at least as flat as I could with the, the area we have to work in just to see. So, I mean, you can still see it's easier to see down here. Um, it's kind of just like a bunch of different tacks and it's not really quite one cohesive solid metal piece, but I think for this, that's okay. It's just sheet metal. It's literally still gonna crumple in a crash. So as long as the welds aren't the weakest link where you, uh, you know, you put any bit of tension or pressure between the layers and it just pops the weld open. As long as it's not that weak, we should be okay. Again, that's kind of the whole theme of this project is it'll be fine. So, um, yeah, we've got kind of the corners done now on the sides. So I'm going to come back over and do this front piece. Um, and then fronts down below. Same on that side down below, around the kind of this front frame piece. And then the headlight buckets. So hopefully those won't be too bad. Um, for the stuff down below, it's really low to the ground. So I'm kind of having to just like sit on the floor, which is kind of uncomfortable, but yeah, we're, uh, we're getting there slowly, but surely. Keyword slowly. Contact. Let me learn you something. Let me get you off the tripod. Okay. So what we have here, we've got our clamp holding our two sheets together. So you can see we're doing this front sheet and this one behind it. I'm gonna try not to touch it because it's probably hot and gonna burn my finger. Um, but let me get my pointer tool. Uh, so the first tack we did was up here, and then we did another tack down there, and then we tried to go buck wild for a third tack up there, and we started kind of melting 
a hole. So I apologize, the lighting is absolutely terrible as usual. Like, right there. You can see it kind of just takes a sharp upward and leftward curve. That used to just be a perfect circle, but now we've got some, uh, some gap to weld. So we're just going to kind of slowly lay in tacks, lay in extra material until we fill it up. So that's the plan. I'm going to put you back on the tripod. Remember, always keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. So we're welding right there. All right, gloves back on for safety. Grab our tools, because we need tools to work. Get our light source. Clean our surface. So we can get some good zappy zappy. All right, let the zappy continue. Myself. Watch out for them sparks. They're spicy. All right. Back off the tripod for lesson number two. Okay. So, not exactly lesson number two, but just kind of the results of lesson number one. So, let me zoom in here. That's looking a whole lot better. Kind of looks like just one solid plug of metal. Uh, it's not quite, but you see we got some like porosity kind of around the edge there, some holes, some gaps, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but if we look from the top, that is actually pretty well filled in. Um, let me stand up. Look at the back side real quick. So we just did this upper one. Uh, you can kind of see where all the white flux powder is. So not bad, we didn't burn through and create a whole huge giant lump of slag. So I think we're good. Getting better with time, getting better with practice. And by practice, I mean I did that side first, now I'm doing this side. <laughs> so, yep. are all done this side this side the front and the front on this side around the frame side this corner and up in here all right that's all the welds next time I'm here I'll grind it smooth and paint it 
And then we can finally reassemble this car. Now that all of the spot welds are filled in, um, this is on here good and strong. Uh, before, this was held on with just a couple screws, um, and they were not even sheet metal screws. They were just like coarse threaded, like, I swear, they were wood screws, it's crazy. Now, this is on here really strong, so even though it's in, uh, the parking brakes are engaged, you can see, I can yank on it all I want, and it's not coming off the car. So, our welds aren't pretty, but they're definitely better than what was here before. I'm all finished grinding the welds smooth. Um, the point of smoothing it out is just to kind of get rid of like the really obviously rough looking welds. So now it's gonna be kind of smoother and hopefully blend in and be a little bit less noticeable. It'll be covered up by the headlights and the bumper of course, but you know, I don't want it to be super obvious that it's been poorly welded by yours truly. Um, so, Next step, I am going to clean everything. I vacuumed off all the metal shavings and swept up. Um, there is a surprising amount for just sanding down the welds. Uh, there was a, a lot of stuff to clean up. So um, we're gonna do some surface prep. We're going to mask, because I don't need to paint everything, just where the, the bare metal is. Um, and then we will do some primer and paint and I'll go into more depth about that here in a few minutes. But for now, we'll just clean and do the, the masking. Uh, for this, I'm not doing actual painting prep. I'm just using some soap, uh, dish soap and water, and then just like a, a blue paper towel. Um, just trying to get off the last of the metal shavings, the dust, and um, any bits of like paint, because the masking tape won't stick to like loose powder, it has to be on a good clean surface, so um, this, the soap will have a little bit of degreaser in it, but it's mainly just to get like the dust off so the masking tape can stick to it. I didn't mask too much um, because, like I said, all of this is hidden behind the fenders. You're only going to see it when the hood is open. This is literally behind the headlights, so you won't see it until someone removes the entire headlight assemblies. Um, same thing with the front. It's all behind the bumper. You're never going to see this unless you take the bumper off. Um, so if I get overspray on the frame down here, or if I get some paint, on the on top of the wires it's not the end of the world so i'm not going to spend too much time masking just mostly want to make sure i don't forget any of these areas um like where i sanded the paint off to get a ground when i was doing the welding um want to make sure i paint those two um, as long as it's got paint on it and the paint is sticky and it's vaguely red um i'll be okay with it Speaking of which, let's go to the paint counter. Welcome to the paint counter. I'll be your server this evening. Is there anything I can get started for you? Yes, I'm doing a collision repair on a 1991 Mercury Capri. Ah, excellent vintage 91. And what are you thinking for the color? Keeping the stock red color. Mm-hmm. And for the budget? Low. I don't really want to splurge on the factory color matched paint. Very good, madam. In that case, here's a list of our house reds. Hmm, nice selection. Um, I think I will go with the sunrise red. Wonderful choice. I'll be right back with a fresh case. Alrighty, so over here we have our selection of in-house 
uh, paint available. I have more available, um, but I wanted to do red. So um, we have some generic black. Um, there's a couple engine brackets that were around the engine. Um, they're very rusted and corroded, so when I took those off, I knew I would want to repaint those at some point. So those are just gonna get generic Rust-Oleum black. Um, and then we also have this rusty metal primer. Um, it will prevent it from rusting further and then act as a good surface adhesion promoter um, for when we paint the actual color. Um, you can use it on metal that is not rusty. Um, it just works a little extra good if it happens to be rusty already. Um, so basically this is the primer we're going with. Again, nothing fancy, very low budget. Um, and for color, this is the top of the headlight cover. Um, so over there are the two headlights from the donor car. So those are gonna have a very faded um, red because this parts car was parked outside a lot. Um, so the paint is very faded and it's a different red than the other car. That car, um, I was able to pull one of the headlight covers off um, this is the one that was in the crash, so you can see it is in not very good condition. It's kind of bent up, but it is a good reference for the color. So this here in the middle is the color that was already on the car. And then I tried some different reds that were available at my local hardware store um, and just tried color matching them to see if I could find something off the shelf because um, I didn't want to try and get factory matched paint because that would be really expensive um, even though we're not doing too much area i wanted something that was close enough uh, so we can see here we had like a darker colonial red um, we had like an apple gloss um, i tried it with like a white primer it was way too bright i tried it with a darker primer and you can see it is darker but not dark enough to match this red um, and then tried it with like primer and then a black base coat and then um, the apple gloss on top, and that's still too bright, it's not a very good match. Over here, this is some different caliber paint. Um, the cap was really bright red, but then when you actually spray it, it comes out really dark, kind of like this crimson um, colonial red color. But this one, this sunrise red, is very close right out of the can. Um, so you can see there are some lines, you can see where the masking tape was, where um, the paint I sprayed and the original paint was, but on camera and even in person, it is so close. If you didn't have this line, you probably wouldn't be able to tell where the new paint stops and where the original paint begins. So I think I got really lucky that this color is going to work and be able to color match the rest of the car. So I went out and I got some more. So this is the Rust-Oleum brand. It happens to be the Stops Rust um, kind of product line, um, but it is Sunrise Red. And at my local Home Depot, um, they had this version with the multiple spray tip options. Um, and then at a different like department store, uh, very similar to like a Walmart. Um, they had these other cans that have the standard spray nozzle on top, and you can get these. Um, if you don't have enough in one store, you can go to a different store. Um, I don't know if Walmart actually carries it. I didn't stop at the local Walmart. I went to the other store, um, but it's very similar. So Walmart might also carry this, um, but the Rust-Oleum Sunrise Red is a very close paint match to 1991 Mercury Capris, as long as they have not sat out in the sun and changed color. So for what we're doing, it's close enough, and Rust-Oleum is very cheap, so I am happy that I can kind of take the inexpensive route and save money while doing this rebuild. Um, so now that we have our paint and primer. We will actually spray some paint tonight and then I will get some good night's sleep and come back tomorrow and we can work on something else.
Uh, I guess a uh, quick side note about like safety and PPE. Um, normally when I spray paint, I don't wear any protection or do anything. Um, and I usually end up getting like a bunch of the overspray in my nose because then the next time I blow my nose, it comes out of my nose. Um, and sometimes I feel really funny the next day. So um, <laughs> I think for the amount of painting that an average person does, you can get away with that. Um, if I'm going to be doing more and more automotive stuff and more painting, um, I want to kind of take care of myself and make sure I'm not doing any harm. Um, so I got an actual like respirator, um, and in this case we're using um, an organic cartridge for the actual paint fumes, um, the propellant and then the actual paint drying, all the um, all those smells you get in the air. Um, those are organic vapors. Um, so I'm using the 3M 6001 um, cartridge that fits the mask that I ha happen to have. Um, again, this is just stuff from Home Depot. I think the cartridge I ordered off Amazon or something. Um, read the brochures um, and check the paint that you're using to make sure whatever chemical you're applying you're buying the right type of cartridge for the right type of chemical you're being exposed to. Um, so the 3M 6001 um, is decent for most spray paint. Um, and then these are just kind of dust filters that clip over the outside. Hopefully that'll prevent this from just kind of clogging up with red overspray and it'll get on the cheap um, like fabric filter instead of the expensive chemical filter. Um, so if anyone else is curious or is in a similar position and they want to get kind of the right safety gear and wants to know, hey, how, how, how do I know what to get and how to wear it and what I'm supposed to do, um, hopefully this helps a little bit. Um, some stuff online is just anecdotal and people's opinions and some stuff is like tried and tested and it's on the manufacturer's website and they have to know what they're doing in order to be certified to sell it. Um, at least I hope so. So, and then since I also wear glasses, I am going to wear safety glasses because in the past when I've painted, um, sometimes the overspray I will get very small like dots and stuff on my glasses, um, which comes off later, but then I have to spend more time washing my actual glasses. So I'm just gonna wear like safety glasses, even though I don't really have an eye hazard. It's just to avoid getting overspray and stuff on my actual glasses. Um, and I don't have any contacts to wear, so I'm just gonna be wearing my actual glasses. Um, so respirator glasses, probably not necessary, but I am inside an enclosed garage. Um, I don't have exterior ventilation. It's like 35 degrees outside, so it's too cold to leave the door open and the paint won't even stick. Um, and I will be very uncomfortable if I leave the door open. So I'm going to do this instead of ventilation or waiting until springtime. So um, yeah, that's just a quick aside. Um, sorry, I know this isn't really in frame. It's kind of a weird, like I'm taller than my tripod is. So I can't really get my camera like up high enough to talk to. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of going a little overboard with PPE, but I'd rather go overboard and like save my lungs from damage like 20 years in the future. Whatever. This wasn't really that expensive in the grand scheme of things. So let's get to paint. Good morning. Um, it is the next day and I am back here at the shop. Um, I took off the masking tape. There was like one little area that I missed so I just kind of touched that up really quick with the red. Um, but as you can see, it is red. We no longer have bare metal. Um, covered up all of the brown primer with the red. Um, so here, 
you can see there's kind of a, a color difference um, between the stuff that we painted and what was already here in the engine bay. Um, but the stuff in the engine bay does not match the exterior color anyway. Um, so it's okay if that doesn't quite blend as perfectly. Um, but I have the fender just kind of sitting on here. I wiped off the dust so you can see the color. And like this is one of the spots that we painted. It's still a little bit tacky. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell on camera. The camera probably makes it look better. Um, but it's, it's pretty darn close to the color of the actual fender. So um, this front piece is still a different color. Um, I have not painted that yet. Um, but it looks like this is doing okay. So uh, another quick side note. Um, this is the respirator I was using last night. I put it back in the Ziploc bag just so it's not gonna get covered in dust sitting in the shop. These are the filters I was using last night when I was spray painting the red on the front of the car. Um, as you can see, the filters that I did not use are still nice and white. The ones that I did use, um, this is after like an hour. So I did one coat of primer and two coats of the red. Um, and you can see it's like light red. So all that stuff is now in the filter instead of uh, going inside my lungs. So um, yeah, I'm kind of happy with my choice that I did that. Um, no headaches, no nothing, even though I was spraying in an enclosed space. Respirator was totally the move. I think at this point it's safe to say that the collision repair portion is completed. Um, obviously there's still a long list of things to do. Um, we still have fenders to adjust. We need to get the hood adjusted to work with the fenders. Um, we need to do more painting. Um, some of the new pieces, some of the donor pieces from the other car just so everything matches. We have to do some paint correction on the fenders that came with the car. Um, so there's still plenty of work to do. We have to reassemble everything um, and then connect the engine, get all the fluids through it and make sure the engine is good and healthy. So this project is by no means done, but the welding and collision repair, the sheet metal part, I would say is complete. So I think I'm going to kind of end this video here. Um, there will be more videos in the future, so if you want to see more of this car or any other automotive projects I have in my garage, you guys can't see them because they're off camera, but there's plenty of things I can work on. So um, other cars, other automotive and motorcycle related projects, um, we still have our small engine rebuild that we are trying to work on. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, turn on notifications if you want. I upload about once a month, so I won't fill up your inbox with notifications. Um, and if you enjoy seeing things like this, please let me know in the comments, leave a like on the video. It really helps me out. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.